Hey guys, Stripter here. Welcome to this year's Halloween Horror Movie Guide. This year I've picked out five more scary movies that I think you will either find artistic, entertaining, scary, or just fun to watch on Halloween. Going to be going all over the board here. A few foreign films, a few of them funny, a few of them very scary, different genres and everything, so I do hope you enjoy. And let's start off with number one. The first movie I'm going to be recommending this year is Suspiria. And you're going to say to yourself, what in the hell is Suspiria? Well, if you're a horror movie fan, you probably know. If not, this is an Italian film that is an English only set in Rome and it basically tells the story of a ballet student who gets a scholarship to study at a prestigious ballet academy but as soon as she arrives the weather is bad it's dark it's foreboding it's scary and not long after arriving at the school things seem to be a bit off she begins to get ill the doctors don't seem very helpful even the other students are very concerned about what's going on and the idea behind this film is pure atmosphere it's creepy it's claustrophobic. There's these really intense drum music that plays all the way through. It's very loud. And on top of that, it's an art film. It's designed from top to bottom to be an art film to make you think and to kind of poke your brain in unusual ways. Almost every single angle you see is unusual, unsettling. The movie, while not entirely violent, is very scary. It's very intense. And even as a guy who's seen a lot of scary movies, I watched this about six months ago, it definitely got my blood flowing. And there are some very, very gruesome murders in the movie. There's not a ton. It's not a blood and guts movie. It's an atmosphere intense scary movie. But when it does get bloody, it goes way over the top on bloody. I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, but there are several twists and turns along the way, which I think many of you will find very fun to watch. My next recommendation is almost on the complete opposite end of the spectrum. We're going to be looking at John Carpenter's 1982 version of The Thing. This was a remake of The Thing from Another World, but is now considered a classic horror movie in its own right. And it's unique for several reasons. First of all, it stars a man instead of a woman. Most horror movies have a female lead. And not only is it any man, but it's Kurt Russell, one of the most manly men on the planet, Snake Plissken himself. And it's got an entire cast of men. 100% men, no women to scare at all, and they're entirely logical, reasonable, and rational throughout this entire rationale. Rational throughout this entire movie, they don't make stupid mistakes. They don't do anything crazy. They don't uh, go off the rails. They try really, really hard to survive, and things still manage to go wrong because the threat they're facing is so severe. The gist of the story is that an Antarctic research team, U.S.-based, finds a spaceship in Antarctica that a Swedish team has unearthed. Logically, they decide to explore, take pictures, and see what's going on with it because it's the opportunity of a lifetime. Winter has just rolled in, so they're not going anywhere, and they want to get as much data as they can before it snows over. Uh, they think they're lucky in that they find an alien, and they're like, yes, we get to be the first to autopsy to do anything with it. But unfortunately, it turns out to not be such a friendly alien. This alien can morph into all sorts of grotesque shapes, copying human, alien, animal DNA, bending. So you've got animals, dogs, people. Uh, alien creatures all bending into this gooey mesh and it just it's like a, it's like a transformer except it does in a brutally horrifying and scary way the people think that it's a great idea to kill it with fire I agree with them and Kurt, they try to burn everything you see a lot of juxtaposition between the freezing cold and freezing to death and burning them you burn them alive so there I guess there's some sort of symbolism going on there but things get even scarier when the creature further evolves and is able to fully copy human beings even retain their memories emotions and speech patterns and the entire movie goes from a monster shoot em up into this deeply intense paranoid of who's infected who's one of us who's one of them what's going on I'm sure you would say that no you wouldn't you're the alien I'm the alien we're all the alien it's very scary very intense and it's a smart psychological movie and an intense gory movie on top of that we're talking it's like the pinnacle of old-school latex and blood effects horrifying grotesque stuff my third movie of the day is an unusual one. I'm going to be recommending Return of the Living Dead. This is technically a sequel to the original Night of the Living Dead. So they had two co-writers and two directors, if I'm remembering this correctly, and they both argued over who would get the rights to the film, so they decided to split it, with one doing Night, Day, Dawn, and the other one doing Return of the Living Dead. So this is the first sequel, Return of the Living Dead, to that one. And while it is campy, while it is goofy and humorous and considered not that scary of a movie, 
I actually think it can be really scary and really cool because it goes way off the rails, especially near the end. But the basic story is uh, 80s stereotypes versus zombies in an increasingly scary movie. It starts off really comedic, really campy, really silly. And as the movie goes on, those elements get toned down and down and down until it's legitimately terrifying. You've got your 80s punks, you've got uh, morticians, you've got regular people, and no shortage of really, really insane zombies that are mostly done with latex and old school special effects. The plot is that this mortician has one of the original zombies from Night of the Living Dead sealed in a jar. He accidentally breaks it open and the gas and the bites and everything spreads around the entire community while at the same time these punks are busy doing wildly inappropriate things in a graveyard and of course that goes poorly and more and more zombies are created. This one's different in that it's not really an infection and you can't shoot their heads to blow them up and kill them and it literally does reanimate the dead sometimes centuries old skeletons almost. They have the famous tar man which looks very silly here in this uh, screenshot but I guarantee you is legitimately terrifying in the movie and is another fantastic use of practical effects. They also have a mortician character who provides a lot of scientific explanation, a lot of insights, and adds some grounded reality so it's not just all teenagers trying to survive. And again, it gets darker and darker and darker until a finale you have to see to believe. And another cool thing about this movie is it is the movie where zombies say brains. This movie created the stereotype that zombies eat brains and explains exactly why. Unfortunately, that's been lost in zombie trivia, but I thought I would go ahead and play the full clip here for you, the only clip in this review, to see how fantastic this can actually be. You can hear me. Yes. Why do you eat people? Not people. Brains. Brains only. Yes. Why? The pain. What about the pain? The pain of being dead. Number four today is a much more contemporary movie, and that's going to be Cabin in the Woods. Even though it's a newer one and I'm a sucker for old school, this has become one of my favorite horror movies of all time. But it's very different in that it's also, it is it is a scary movie, it is a comedy, and it is a criticism of scary movies all at the same time. So on the surface level, you have uh, four friends or five friends going to visit this cabin in the woods. It looks like the Evil Dead cabin. It looks like the beginning of every generic, boring, scary movie. However, what they don't know is underneath this cabin is a massive multi-billion dollar laboratory possibly run by the United States government whose job it is to murder these teenagers in increasingly strange ways in order to appease the elder gods. I mean it's a huge facility, uh, state-of-the-art technology security, but the people there are morally bankrupt and corrupt, even taking bets on who's gonna die first, on what monster they're gonna pick, on you know how long different people will last. But on the cabin level it's the unfortunate teenagers uh, stumbling into the room of horrors and summoning monsters and by the way did I mention monsters because there are a ton of monsters in this movie they literally have like a, uh, a stockpile of monsters so that they can release in any terror upon these teenagers at any time but the movie itself is legitimately scary it's crazy it's not what you expect I would like to talk a lot more about it from a more analytical perspective but doing so would spoil it so I'll just leave you at that the final recommendation for this year is a slow burn movie that's a little bit of an independent film called Kill List. It is not what you're expecting from a scary movie, and it doesn't even get that scary until over halfway in. The plot is that two hitmen get hired to kill four people, if I'm remembering correctly. This is an English movie, so it's two English hitmen, and everything is not as sunny and cheery as it appears to be. The main character is suffering from extreme PTSD, both from war, from his previous hits, and he's struggling to try to be a father and take care of his kid while he's out killing other people and their children. So he's struggling really hard. And there's a lot of subtle things here, like the wife who you would think wouldn't be in on the secret actually is, and she's the one encouraging him to kill people so they can get more money and send their daughter to a good school. And nothing in this movie is as it appears to be. There's a deeper layer to everything, and not 
just in a spooky, oh, it's twisted way, but more in an actual good complicated way. Even their client is not who he appears to be. There's something subtle going on. The very first person they kill actually expects to die and thanks them. It says, thank you for killing me, which is very strange, and he turns out to be a pedophile, so they torture him a bit. And the two hitmen, instead of continuing on their kill list, decide to dig into their client and see what's going on, and they get deeper and deeper into this weird sort of occult mystery, and they start to distrust each other, and they are beginning to think that maybe they're part of a ritual or something, and it leads to a truly epic finale that is a slow burn. It's not a big explosion, but it is scary, it's dramatic, and it'll leave you thinking for quite some time. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this Halloween movie review. I hope you check out a few of them. They're all linked down there below in the description on Amazon, Netflix, Hulu, wherever you can find them. And if you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.